I think Jesus had a word deed ministry or for elementary education people, a show and tell ministry. <laughs> so he said, your sins are forgiven. He declared that. And then he showed that it was true by letting the, the person walk, by healing him. And he does that over and over again. For example, in yeah. John chapter eight, he says, I'm the light of the world. He says that. And then he shows that it's true by giving sight to the blind man. He says, I'm the resurrection and the life. And then he shows that by raising Lazarus from the dead. So it's a holistic ministry that Jesus has. And that's, that speaks so powerfully because it wasn't just a matter of speaking words of forgiveness. There was a corresponding action. It sounds like that there's something that is very helpful to us today when we think about forgiving other people. It's just not you know, thinking nice thoughts or saying nice words, those may be components of it, but there's something deeper going on when we're really trying to forgive other people, right? Well, psychologists have been studying forgiveness for the last 30 years. In fact, the government has given more grants to study forgiveness and unforgiveness than any other research area for psychology. No, that's amazing. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. So what they found is that unforgiveness leads to uh, anxiety, depression, higher risk of heart attack, stress, strokes, um, the emotional problems of um, bitterness, anger, guilt. Uh, spiritually, if you read spiritual warfare experts, they will say that unforgiveness is the biggest open door that we can give to Satan, the biggest one. And so all of these areas uh, forgiveness isn't just a spiritual concept. It affects us physically. It affects us emotionally. It affects us relationally in every single way. Mm. So how do we operate? And we'll talk a little bit about receiving forgiveness for, from God as well here in the, uh, the future. But let's talk about the, the whole notion of extending forgiveness to a person. How can we really appropriate the power of the Holy Spirit and the principles of Scripture in order to really be, be able to forgive a person and set ourselves free yeah. from all of these different uh, components that you were just sharing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's critical that we forgive others. It's not easy. Uh, I mean, it's not for me. I don't know about for you. <laughs> it's not easy to forgive people. <laughs> Uh, but we have to do that. It's, it's, we're called to biblically, and it sets us free in all of these other areas. So Paul tells us to forgive others as Christ the Lord has forgiven you. And so what I do when I work with students who are struggling with forgiving others is uh, we sit down and we talk about, well, tell me about the sins in your life. Tell me what God has forgiven you for. And we make lists, and then we confess those to the Lord and we experience God's forgiveness. So it's a, a, a vertical forgiveness. And then once we receive God's forgiveness for so many things, I mean, when I think about what, how other people have hurt me, it's never more than what I've hurt the Lord. And if the Lord can forgive me, then I can extend that out horizontally to other human beings. It's not easy, but it's doable through the power of the Spirit.